about what we just saw. And then, of course, we're going to have to link that to the book. They are the worst morgue people I've ever seen. <laughs> they didn't even check the polls. I know, but you have to remember, this is in the times of black and white. People were actually like that. I mean, they weren't like so like, oh, let's check this a little like we are today. So yeah. They didn't even hear the, the breathing of the guy. They can't, they can't be that deaf, right? It happened. There are so many stories in the past about people who were in their casket in the funeral and they woke up. It happened because, and that's when all of this started where they would be like double check to make sure the person is dead. So it happens. But give me your thoughts about him being trapped in his body, unable to move his body, and unable to tell them that he was alive. Tell me about that. It's a nightmare, actually. It is a nightmare. Why? Because you're trapped inside your body without being able to tell people that you're alive. And at first, I thought they would cut him in half, you know, to, to more, you know, cut the people yeah. in half. To, yeah, so I was like, oh my God, and what if they don't, don't realize he's alive and you're being cut? Oh, Jesus. I, so, yeah, it's. it's Mm -hmm. Not even thinking about the autopsy, just um, if they're just simply burying alive, that will be enough for me. Enough terror for me. I think it's, it's, it's how almost homosexuality is. Like they feel trapped in their body and they they think they are not what they what they what all people see. I don't know. I think that's it. Okay, so here's my first question to you. What's the difference between a physical prisoner being in a prison for walls and being a prisoner in your own body? What would be the difference? The main difference is the company. The company? Yeah, because in a prison you have cellmates. If they're trapped in your body, you really have yourself. In the prison, in the prison you are able to move and to talk and to express your emotion. But when you are like in your own prison with your own body, you can do you can do anything. You, you only have you only can think. Okay. But let's talk a little bit about, about what Mary said, where she mentioned uh, homosexuals who say they feel trapped in their physical body. I'm, and, we're, and then that makes us there's a distinction. People who feel trapped in a body that's not theirs, or people who have this, like this guy, nervous system completely shut down and being unable to, to move or to express yourself. Um, which one do you think is more, is, is uh, harder, is more difficult? Being in a physical prison, like for the rest of your life, or being trapped in a body that you feel is not yours, or being physic trapped in your body with your nervous system shut down and you cannot move. Which one is worse? Not being able to move. The, the, I, the third one. It's worse, way worse. And why? Why does it make that, why does the fact that you're not able to move, why does it make it worse? Because there you don't have like a means of ex escape. Well, if you have like this spiritual prison like you don't feel yourself or something like that when when your physical prison you are you're not yourself you can't move anymore so it has it even goes to the power of sanity you just become insane after a while okay so let's talk about different ways in which we imprison ourselves different ways in which we become our own prisoners Tell me about that. Think about it and tell me. Are we sometimes prisoners to ourselves? I think when we are afraid of, you know, doing some kind of things, we're being like, we're trapped like in this emotional prison, you know? When you're, you don't do things because you're afraid of what is going to happen, but actually if you do it, you know that that experience you will have, 
it will be one of the best experience you will have and but you don't do it because you're afraid of doing it you know fear is like a, a, a really like emotional prison I can say I think so yes we're sometimes we are not like in the physical prison or something but inside of us we are doing a, like building this emotional prison on ourselves so what would be some uh, attitudes or behaviors or beliefs that actually keep us as prisoners? What are some attitudes, behaviors, or beliefs that imprison us? Okay, so the same people don't keep answering because you know you get a little number every time you participate. Let me just randomly call on Diana Otero. <laughs> what are some beliefs, behaviors, or attitudes, or give me one, that can make us prisoners? Uh, when we want to sink ourselves on pain, emotional pain. Give me an example. Um, for example, we know that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Go. Okay, when we know that we are passing through a bad moment, we have to keep in mind that that bad moment will will get over. But we like to suffer. Sometimes we want to be pessimist. And we just like, um, like the pain. I don't know. I don't think people actually like the pain, but I think they get so accustomed to it that it's yes. like, mi prima, dolores mi prima, something like that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's one good example. And let's randomly call an Aranza, who's right beside Diane on my screen. Give me another example of a belief, behavior, or attitude. I think that it's, it's in the line with what Diane said. It's like when we repress all what we feel, all what we thought. And we just, um, in, and sometimes we get to engañar fool to fool ourselves making us think that we feel something that we don't and that i think that that's an example yep oh well i can there's maybe that's how how winston feels about julia like in the in the last chapter in chapter one she he's like um talking with himself about julia and maybe that's how he feels about you. That she's maybe he's lying about what he feels about her. Probably. Okay, another person who wants to tell me a belief, attitude, or behavior that keeps us trapped. Let's call on Layali. You knew I was going to call you. Go. Mm, when someone uh, do something that is wrong and um, she or he already know that the thing that she's doing is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you people are getting very philosophical and very complicated. Narrow it down, make it simple. Think about a belief that a lot of people have that's actually their prison. For instance, a simple common belief in Panama. If, it's, if it starts uh, raining and I walk in the rain, I'm going to get sick. Now that's not true because you don't get sick because you got wet. You got sick because of the virus and bacteria in the environment. But people in Panama have this belief and as soon as it starts raining, ah! I mean, you would think it's like acid is falling from the sky. But it's because of the belief that if you get wet, you are going to get very sick. And how does that belief keep a lot of people prisoners? The belief that if you get wet in the rain, you're going to get sick. How, do, how, do that, how does it imprison people? Give me an example of how you would become a prisoner to that belief. You don't go outside when it's raining. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or if you're on the street and it's, it, and I've seen this, if you're on the street and it's raining, you're going to just be paralyzed under a small little roof. They're scared to death waiting for the rain to pass. So you don't really enjoy your life for instance i like to walk every morning i walk every morning whether there's sun or rain i walk in the rain 
a lot of times, but before when there were actually people on the street, people would stop their cars to tell me, se va a enfermar, mamita, se va a enfermar. No, I'm not, and I never get a cold for walking in the rain. But you know, you, you don't stop to say, hey, good morning, God bless you, have a great day. No, you're stopping to tell me I'm gonna get sick. What? So these are attitudes, these are beliefs that keep people in prison. Tell me another one, a simple belief that we have that might keep us in prison. This is not simple, but I think it has to be to be you need to say this. Idea who's talking. Oh, Bandisa, okay, yes. The what? This is not simple, but it has to be we beauty stereotypes that they tell you that this and this looks it's the way that you will look better and mm -hmm. people can gel themselves up i mean their real personality mm -hmm. that's an example yeah people who really want to be skinny and they're really hungry but they're not going to eat because they really want to be skinny because they think that's make that makes them more beautiful <laughs> Genesis, you are going to talk. Give me another example. Um, yes, I was going to say the belief that some people have that if you're awake at 3 a.m. at night, something bad is going to happen. Or yeah. if you're watching a horror movie at that time, <laughs> that spirit will come to your house or those things. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right, one more person who hasn't spoken yet. I have one. Okay. Uh, me <laughs> that when we, we take up half a face okay go there, th now we're talking yes then when we take a bath we can do it uh, we can uh, no when we eat we can take a bath like after you eat uh-huh <laughs> because you're going to get like a stomach ache or Something like that. Yeah, I was told that if you take a bath after you eat, you're going to get paralyzed. And you're going to be in the shower like, and you can't move because you took a bath and you just ate. Yeah, those are beliefs that keep us in prison. Now, if we paid attention to the short clip of the Alfred Hitchcock movie, what saved this man? What was it that finally saved him? that he cried exactly that he cried which is kind of odd because he was he was having this nervous lockdown and he was able to push out a tear okay so let's let's use that if he had not been able to express that sadness what would have happened to him he will be cut on health oh yeah half yeah you know you think they were going to do an autopsy on him? No. Yes. We were going to I the old one. Think, I, I, I even if it's like years and years ago, I'm afraid that I was like, oh my God. But yeah, I really think they would do an autopsy. I really think. Uh, they weren't going to do an autopsy because they knew he had died in an accident. And the doctor already said, oh, his, his chest was crushed and probably internal bleeding, blah, blah, blah. And he was just going to write out the death certificate. But uh, yeah, if he had not pushed out that tear, they would have put him inside the, the, the freezer. And then he would have definitely died. Okay, so let's bring this to, uh, let's turn this into a lesson. What could be the lesson there? With, I'm talking specifically about the last part. He expressed an emotion and that emotion saved him. And this goes in line with what Diane and Aranza were talking about when I asked them about beliefs that keep us trapped. What could be a good lesson there? Showing emotions is important. Mm -hmm. What else? Express your feelings. Mm -hmm. But you know, showing emotion at the right time, because what would have happened if he was under the, in the night when they covered him up and he had started crying? Nobody was gonna see that, right? 
So showing emotions and expressing your feelings at the right time. So for instance, um, is there ever a wrong time to cry? Give me an example. What would be a wrong time to cry? You should not be crying. No, don't cry. When you're making mistakes and crying doesn't help. Okay, but, but it's, it's okay if you're making a mistake. And like if you're trying to send me that audio with your homework and you already had five minutes and then you made a mistake and you need to start all over. Okay, so you cry. And, mm, but give me a real example of a moment in which it's completely inappropriate to cry. Maybe in a survival situation, like you, like sure you are screwed. Maybe there's nothing you can do with what you have. Like say you're in the desert and there's nothing there. You don't have equipment, so you're gonna start crying because you think you're gonna die. But if you start crying, you won't see that maybe there's other ways to solve the problem. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But we're talking about completely inappropriate crying. Oh, come on, people. Think about it. Not even when people are laughing, because people cry when they laugh. So... Yeah, but they're not really crying, though. It's just, it's not crying for sadness. It's just that the tears came out. Like, that happens. What about, for instance, uh, something really, really good just happened to your friend and your friend calls you and says, hey, I want a trip to Europe. I'm going to tour Europe for two weeks. And you start crying. Would that be a good moment to cry? No. So tell me when would it be completely inappropriate to laugh? Let me a moment in which it's inappropriate to laugh. <laughs> at a funeral. At a funeral. At a funeral. At a funeral. <laughs> at a funeral. Now, some of a lot of you said that, so that means you've been laughing at funerals. You've laughed at funerals. No, no, what? <laughs> when I'm, I'm nervous. I my defense, I was five years. Okay, okay. <laughs> when I'm nervous, I laugh a lot. That's true. I, do I start to do, <laughs> and I don't. Oh, that is. I have seen that. Horrible. That's true, Mary Ruth. I've seen that. Okay, so what, what other example of a, a moment when it's completely inappropriate to laugh? Probably when someone is talking about something serious. Nikai se me murió mi mascota. And then you start Your parents are punishing you. Are your what? Your parents are uh, getting at you because you did something wrong. You start laughing, you're just calling for the devil. Yeah. Or when, when the teacher in the classroom meets, it's um, ah, I always forget how it says regañando. Holding. All the classroom. Okay? And someone starts to learn. Yeah. So what, what can you do? What can you do to have a better control of your emotions and know when to express them? I mean, I have never laughed at a funeral. Why would I have to control that? Like, Thank it you, doesn't, Moses, because it you doesn't don't laugh at me. funerals. <laughs> it's not <laughs> funny, like, what? Yeah, but some people do it out of nervousness or some people do it because somebody told you a joke and you just got to laugh at the moment. But yeah, I see your point, Moises. What about the rest of you? What can you do or what steps can you take so that you can learn to express your emotions at the appropriate time? And what does this have to do with Winston? That's my next question. Mary Foster, we can't hear you. You're muted. Unmute. I'm thinking, yeah. I'm thinking out loud. Oh, oh, <laughs> okay. So tell me people, I asked two questions. What can a person do to learn to control their emotions in general, not only at funerals? 
And number two, what does any of this have to do with Winston? I don't know what to say to the first question, but <laughs> to the second one, um, I think Winston sometimes he gets excited too fast, you know? Like when he got um, on the house, what's the name of the story? The man that had to turn off the telescreen, I forgot his name. Richard Charrington. I think it was him. Oh, no. Um, Which one? When he got to o a O'Brien's house. O'Brien. O'Brien's. O'Brien's, okay. yeah. Um, and when he started, like, asking, will you kill, will you do this? I, I don't know, but I felt like Winston was getting excited too fast, you know? He wasn't, like, controlling his emotions, and he was, like, just answering because of the emotions he was feeling at that time. And that would probably get him in a problem, but anyways, yeah, I think... And uh, remember that just before they were arrested, Winston had been looking out the window at this woman who was hanging out her clothes, and he was just going over in his mind all that he had learned about the pros. And then he, he thought that, wow, these people have feelings, they have emotions. And that's when he said, we are the dead. And Julia said, we are the dead. And the voice in the telescreen said, you are the dead. But it was because at that point, he had realized like the pros are not these animals that we think they are. These are people who actually know how to feel emotions. They know how to enjoy life in spite of everything. They know how to feel love. And then he, he came to that point where he realized that he wanted some of that. He didn't want to be dead. And then he was arrested. Okay? So it's very important for us to know, be in touch with our emotions and know when to express them. And if you want to figure out how to control your emotions, it's not that complicated. If you're at a funeral and somebody besides you is telling a joke, you just ask yourself, what am I really feeling? Do I need to laugh because this person is laughing? Do I need to cry because that person is crying? Just ask yourself, what am I really feeling? And usually when you ask yourself that, you get a sense of the way in which you should react at that point. Because sometimes people just get angry because everybody's angry. That doesn't make sense. And they don't want to be angry, but since everybody's angry, it's like contagious and they got it too. Or people start crying. This happens a lot with babies. Start crying because everybody's crying. You don't have to cry if you don't want to. So always get in touch with yourself and ask yourself, like, what am I really feeling? I don't feel like crying. I'm not going to cry. It doesn't matter who says or who, who is crying. Now, people, the essence is this. You wanted to say something? Um, I want to ask you for uh, permission. I have to. I don't know what you said, but yes, you can leave. Okay, so in conclusion, people, um, the read chapter one and two from part three. Do that. And number two, your, your um, outline that's coming out probably Friday has a traumatic video that you have to watch <laughs> and comment on. I want you to do that. It's very important because sometimes, especially when you're this age, you have this very strange view of the world that's only, you only learn it from movies. And it's, it's always important to broaden your horizons and to see all the other things that are actually happening in the world because then it gives you a sense of who you are and what you're supposed to be doing in the world. Okay, so that's what? 47 minutes. That's a lot of time. Okay, bye-bye. See you next time. Bye. Teacher, wait, wait, yes, wait. wait, wait, no, wait. No, no, teacher, wait. Yes, wait, wait. Everybody wait. What? <laughs> Teacher, I wanted to tell you that I can uh, upload my homework, my audio to the platform. I don't know what happened. Okay, so you need to send it to an email. That is, it must be English at gmail.com. It must be English at gmail.com. Send it there. And anybody else who's having trouble. Teacher, what, what did you say? <laughs> repeat it again please okay let me try to write that in a word document so you can see it i'm going to share my screen with you in a second it must be english at gmail.com
Okay, so any one of you having trouble? Send me to that email. It must be English at Gmail. Can you see that? Is it big enough? You want me to make it bigger? Because I can make it like a lot bigger. Oh, that's smaller. Okay, anytime you have any trouble uploading your work, send it there. I check that a few times a week. <laughs> okay, so you send it there. Any other questions? No other questions? Okay, now yes, bye-bye.